Toynbee Hall was founded in 1884 as the world's first purpose-built university settlement house. Over the past 130 years, some of the people associated with Toynbee Hall have gone on to have a major influence on UK social policy. This includes uh, the Booth poverty mappers who were based here at the end of the 19th century, through to William Beveridge and his study of unemployment of the early 20th century, right the way through to innovations in the 1930s and 40s around access to credit, and 1950s and 60s around family social work, and right through to uh, the beginning of 2000 and our work on financial inclusion. Today, we are a community-based organisation continuing to work to tackle poverty in our local community and beyond. We work with around 13,000 service users, providing them with practical help and support, education opportunities, youth services, and a range of policy and research that we can better understand their needs. Thinking about our service users is one of the reasons that has brought about our need to regenerate the Toynbee Hall site. Uh, our buildings have increasingly become into a state of disrepair or are unsuitable for the type of activity that we want to carry out. So over the past few years, we've been designing a major regeneration programme of the entire site. And really the primary reasons for that are to do with our service provision, to do with improving access to our heritage, and also to make the organisation more financially sustainable. Over the past three years, we've doubled the number of service users that we have, and we expect that demand to continue in the future. The redevelopment will focus in on two uh, major buildings. Uh, the first is Toynbee Hall itself, which is a Grade two Arts and Crafts building. Um, and we'll be undertaking an extensive restoration programme of Toynbee Hall, um, preserving its finest uh, features and reinstating some of the features that have been lost, uh, particularly during the uh, bomb damage during the Second World War. At the front of the site, we're going to build an entirely new building, which will be purpose-built for our service centre, combining our legal advice services, our wellbeing services, as well as other activity space uh, supporting um, well-being and uh, education. Last year, the Free Legal Advice Centre um, has helped over 2,100 clients with the support of our corporate and individual volunteers. We have addressed issues such as housing, employment, family, consumer and civil litigation. We currently operate in a cramped condition, meaning there is um, less confidentiality in our cubicles. And we have been unable to meet the increased number in terms of clients who need free legal advice. Our free legal advice center will be four times bigger than the existing one. We will have the state of the art, art IT and uh, confidential cubicles for our clients. Our highly valued volunteer and intern programme, which currently has over 300 participants, offers progression routes for people to build their skills and confidence and can offer opportunities to gain paid employment. The redevelopment will enable us to expand this much valued programme. We currently run a programme called Disha, which is for English speakers of other languages. And part of the exciting element of the, the heritage programme we're going to introduce is where we help them tell the stories of their diverse heritage and what East London currently means to them. So we use the past to help them reflect and to tell us about the future. Volunteering at Toynbee is kind of at the heart of how we work with communities and it's critical that that element stays um, as we go forward. So what we've done is we not only will we offer, continue to offer our programme to all of the members of our community, we will offer a bespoke programme um, called a residential volunteer programme which will have six volunteers. Toynbee Hall has an incredibly exciting and interesting history which deserves to be preserved and shared. It was started in 1884 by Henrietta and Samuel Barnett with support from students from Oxbridge. They arrived here in the East End uh, 10 years before and they worked on an unusual um, and much more inclusive way of um, tackling the issues of poverty and bad housing and so on. 
Right from the beginning, residential volunteers lived here at Toynbee Hall. And the most influential, the most important were Attlee, Clement Attlee, who became Prime Minister, and William Beveridge, both of whom were architects, really, of the welfare state. One of the earliest residents was Harry Samuel Lewis, who was able to connect with the huge Jewish community that lived around Toynbee Hall at the time. As people came from overseas, they'd often, the only thing they could say was, take me to Mr Lewis, who would then um, stand in Toynbee Hall and provide all kinds of support that people needed. Our digitised archive will provide an unrivalled educational experience for young people from five years old in primary school right through to university students doing their masters and, and uh, PhDs. My husband Christopher and I came to London after we graduated. We decided we wanted to do something to help and we looked around for what we could do by way of volunteering after work and Toynbee Hall was one of the things that we looked at. Well, Christopher started at the Legal Advice Centre here 40 years ago this year, in 1975. And he's been here ever since as a legal advisor, as a trustee, helping out in all sorts of different ways. My career took a slightly different path. I came back to Toynbee, helping out, looking at uh, English lessons for the local women who wanted to learn. That contact that I had uh, with those ladies was something that made me decide that I wanted to do more. And my part at the moment is that I'm going to fund the Accessible Archive project here. Now, you might expect a teacher of history, which I am, to be interested in the archives, and of course I am. But as you will know, there are lots and lots of places which are desperate for money to help with archives. This one, I think, is very special. The plan for a study area and a permanent exhibition will, I hope, teach everybody who comes here something about social exclusion in the area. Toynbee Hall's Regeneration Project offers an opportunity to change attitudes, to influence social policy and to ensure that its many projects are financially secure for the generations to come in the East End of London. The cost of fulfilling our ambition to regenerate the Toynbee Hall estate is just over £16 million. We'll contribute £11 million of this from the sale of assets that we do not see as core to the long-term vision of the organisation. We anticipate borrowing £1.5 million and the remaining £3.5 million will come from our capital appeal. We've already secured more than £2.5 million of this, including a £1.6 million pledge from the Heritage Lottery Fund. The restored and extended Toynbee Hall will mean that we can expand and enhance our already successful venue hire operation and the upper floors of the new building at 28 Commercial Street will provide a thousand square metres of commercial office space available for rent. By 2025, we anticipate that our venue hire and commercial office space rental will generate almost a million pounds a year for the organisation. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for all of us involved in Toynbee Hall. We're passionate about making a difference and we're passionate about continuing our fight to eradicate poverty. This redevelopment is essential to enabling us to do that. We'd be delighted for whatever support you're able to give us, your connections with Toynbee Hall, your interest in our work, but importantly, having your ongoing support is essential to enabling our vision to come true. Thank you very much.